Assalamu alaikum, welcome to the Progeny Podcast. This week I am delighted to be joined by my dear friend Muhammad Al Khazraji, a British Iraqi optician who was born and raised here in the UK and is one of the key founders of Shabab al Subtain. In today's podcast, we'll be speaking about the importance of being successful. We will speak about how Muhammad and his group of friends established Shabab al Subtain, the role of youth in organizing events for the community and passing this role to the younger generation. Muhammad, thank you for joining us. Uh, your uh, dear brother of mine, alhamdulillah, it's I've known you for you, many yeah. years. Uh, and it's an honor to have you on this show. Um, I wanted to start by asking you how it is uh, being an optician. An uh, optician? The, yeah. It's actually a good climate to be an optician nowadays. Why is that? We Khatifa compared to pharmacists, pharmacists there's too many of them out there now. Yep. So obviously their their rate has reduced dramatically, there's too mm-hmm. much competition. Um whereas with opticians there's not that many opticians around. Okay. And they open up more stores so there's more in demand for especially local optometrists. So very good. It's a good time to be an optician. Um why did you choose this uh career? As a, honestly, it's yeah. because I didn't get into dentistry. But <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> So, so, so you were, the first choice was dentistry? It was dentistry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was advised by one of my dad's friends that, listen, optometry is a good course to go into. I looked into it deeper. I was going to go with pharmacy, but I wasn't really too keen. How important is it for, for our youth to be to have good jobs, to have good degrees, especially, you know, Muslims in the West? And I've asked this to a, f- to a few of my guests to try and understand the the, the youth today... Their, their their main focus sometimes is is outside education. I mean, you you must remember in your teenage years, your maybe the years you're G, doing your GCSEs or your A levels. Your maybe your mindset is not so much on studying. Studies, yeah. But I'm guessing you know you had your parents or family members that pushed you to that. How important is it for our for our younger generation to to concentrate on their studying, especially with the rise of with so much things that could get them away from the from their education i think it's extremely important to be successful not not necessarily to have a job as such obviously having a qualification mm-hmm. without a doubt without a doubt will make it easier for you in life to try and get into certain different fields but to be successful especially in this country you're seen from an immigrant background um there's a bit of an eye on you mm-hmm. oh look at this guy he's not really British as such mm-hmm. um, so when you are successful in what you do very nice okay. it's obviously uh, will give a good image on, on ourselves you mentioned um, this you're, you're looked at differently are we are we still looked at you know uh, were you born in the UK or? I was yeah okay so so you were born in the UK uh, but are you still looked at differently uh, do I you, mean do even you in think, my uni days yeah. they used to thought they used to think I was a Asian overseas uh Student, they okay. didn't believe I used to be a brother, <laughs> so yeah. So, I mean, you look different, you, act you get different. treated differently. I wouldn't say you get treated differently, but yeah, and there's been certain scenarios or certain cases, especially with patients at work, where they might have a slightly different expectation of you, or mm. so when you kind of defeat that, obviously, it changes their kind of mindset as well. Do you think that that? It's better that you 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 face this challenge, or do you, do you do you find it like you, you're you're put at a, you know you you've got an unfair a start to the race, for example. I mean, you always I think you do. You will always be slightly to a disadvantage uh, compared to the Barry and the Harry, mm-hmm. but obviously with the perseverance, with the tenacity to go on, um, kind of how can I say? Um, like it, it, it beats all the doubters mm-hmm. um, when you kind of overtake all these people and what you do, and it does kind of make you stronger as well. Who who was your inspiration growing up? Who was there? Was it a friend? Uh, uh, what parent? I think I had many or inspirations or growing up. I, was, I wasn't a particular person. Obviously, you've got your religion. You look at the imams. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure all of us look at our fathers, mm-hmm. um, their struggles, especially our dads who came from such a difficult background, leaving their country, immigrating here, opposing Saddam Hussein. So I think there's many factors, not just one person who you look up to growing up. 
Alhamdulillah that we 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 have the blessings uh, of being in a place where we had the opportunity to study. Okay. You know, you mentioned our, our parents were even if some of them did maybe study and get an education and a degree, they were forced out of their of their home. So yeah. and we'll never understand that because I don't. Uh, well, we understand it, but we don't understand the the measures that Reven they took. There, yeah. You know, getting kicked out of your house, leaving your home, everything behind because you're opposing a dictator. Um, coming back to the holy month of uh, Muharram, I know you're involved with Shabab Subtain. Before I get into the your your Muharram uh, programs, um, how did Shabab Subtain start? Uh, and I know you're one of the first people to be part of this. You're you're still obviously involved and a key member of Shabab Subtain. How did Shabab al-Subtain come about? So we started, I mean, at the time, there was a bit of a shortage of majalis going on. I remember you were part of Shabab al-Mahdi. Yeah. Um, that kind of died down. Mm -hmm. So there was a bit of a vacant space. Mm -hmm. So there was a we, gap. Start, we, start, yeah, we started gathering around every week for Quran. Then we started kind of evolved to doing tafsir also with the Quran. And then from there, slowly, slowly, we started getting into the majalis. How many people were coming, you know, on a regular? On regular, we were around 10. And th these 10 are the, the sort of the founders yeah. of? Yeah, of oh, yes. Alhamdulillah. When was the, the first, um, because I know at the beginning it started as something in someone's house. Yeah. Uh, Quran circle, 10, 15 people. When did Shabab al-Subtain come about into the scene of doing majalis doing events during I think uh, our first majlis was if i'm not wrong 2006 2007. okay yeah it was in muhammadi trust at the time we got ali najaf brother ali najaf yeah so that was our first muharram program again was there did you feel there was there was a gap that that there, there wasn't being uh there was no english majalis happening that's why you, you stepped was. forward I think, I think stanmore had had the majlis uh, no i'm talking time. about the iraqi uh, yeah. i don't think there was there was one no they sheikh bilal used to do one if you remember yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's been said mehdi mudarasi we've done it in brunsbury a few times yeah said father, yeah. Bahar said father Bahar Ilum, sorry yeah um and actually funny enough said father approached us yeah and that was the first majlis we've done Mm -hmm. Let's get in collaboration. Let's get let's get a majlis going. He helped you to yeah. start off your first majlis. Now you know, looking back, you know, ten years down the line, or even even more, um, you started Shabab Subtain to bring the, the 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 youth together. Then you're probably in your teenage years. Now you're much older, married, alhamdulillah, family. Has has how did Shabab al subtain impact you as a person today? Or, and also, how successful do you think it was that the, the guys that started Shabab al subtain alhamdulillah, most of them, I'm guessing, are married yeah. with families. Um, do you think the, 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 this group had an impact on you, the, the actual without gatherings? That, yeah, yeah, without that, obviously, growing up, as we were quite young when we, we, we first started setting mm -hmm. up, so... That environment that we were in, it kind of kept you within the right path. As in, obviously, living in this country, you have so many different paths you can take. But yeah. being in that environment is is, is vital. And obviously, uh, any teenager, I would advise stay within an environment that that is healthy for you, your friends. Your friends are vital to to growing up and how who you become. And I mean, now if I look back, there's so much barakah and blessings that come from the khidmah that you do, especially towards yes. the Ahlul Bayt, that you, will, you, know, you see the rewards you see in your day-to-day, 100% day-to-day life, um, whether it's how to manage people, how to talk with people, um, just so many things. An important question is, you know, at the, at the time you guys sort of came together as a group, there wasn't sort of um, adults saying, you have to do this, or you, it was your sort of choice. Yeah. Where you came together and you and you and you arranged these 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 programs, and then again with the, with the help of others, you managed to have um, events throughout the year, including uh, the holy month of Ramadan and the holy month of Muharram, which are quite big events, yeah. especially uh, the, the these two months. Um, of course, you've got other other periods as well. How do you see the? I call them kids. I was going to say kids actually, but they're not really the 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 the, the, the youngsters today. 
looking back, you know, 10 years ago, you know, you you guys sort of started Shabab yeah. Subtain and um do you see the, our, our, our youth, you know, the ones that are now in their teenage years, 18, 19 or even younger, um are they getting enough support and is Shabab Subtain looking after them? Do you feel they they need to sort of step up and and do things or is it still you doing all the work and then these younger lot they're not they're not stepping up and yeah. taking charge because i feel sometimes um you can be spoon fed but then th- there's a day where you have to take the spoon and stuff it yourself if that makes sense i think i think one of the i don't want to call mistakes obviously we didn't have that like you said that that direct like direct influence from yeah. from from the from the elders we had obviously say salam who who was always there for us and he's the founder uh-huh. um and we owe a lot to him uh-huh. um but he let us do a lot of like the, the decision making one of the things i wish we had done if i go back in time is obviously involve the youngers a lot more where uh-huh. now i'm not in a point in life where i've got a wife and kid and i'm still having to do kind of the errands and stuff um where the youth can just take it off now obviously as you get older the more or less time you have to dedicate to, towards voluntary work and you don't want to stop that um mm. you want to hand over now the exactly, responsibility the reins. you'll always be there as, as advice as support as ambassador are there the, people that are willing to take the responsibility so now yes now now we do have a team of youngers very motivated shabab um who are willing to take the reins but to mm. be honest with you we've been looking for a long time for the for the for these youngers um, what do you think the problem is this is I'm not sure. I think I think it's, I think it's, I think all this phone and technology doesn't help. As in, okay. a lot of the shabab are not out there. As in, we were always out, and whether it's Majlis, Hussein here, out getting to know each other. Whereas now they're quite secluded. Out, like I'm, especially the two generations younger, I'm more or less out of touch with them. Yeah, yeah, I don't really know Makes, them. Yeah, it's true. Um, whether it's because they're not present, or I'm not making enough of an effort. Mm-hmm. Um, not really too sure. So you're still looking for you're you're, you're looking for volunteers. Uh, as in, uh, at the moment, alhamdulillah, we've we've we found the, the the boys that can take over, mm-hmm. um, and inshallah they're up to the task. And like I said, we'll always be there to to support and advise. But it comes to a point where you have to you, hand it over. Yeah, you you do. This is important. What you what you've said, hand it over. Uh, I'm going to ask something that might be a bit sensitive yeah. to some. Handing it over in our community is a bit difficult for yeah. some. Um, I, I I say the rise of Shabab al-Subtain and similar groups, the rise of, 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 of these youthful groups is because there were certain people, of course I'm not generalizing, yeah. some people. We don't want to generalize and say everyone because of course there are again a lot of organizations that have helped. But some, they don't want to let go. They actually say this is my Husseiniya and yeah. it's in my name and we're we're, we're sticking to it, and that that's what's given the rise to Shabab al uh, That that's how I see it. I mean, I don't know how how you 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 think, but it's given the opportunity. That there's a there's a gap. They don't want to fill it. They don't want to bring the youth and do anything for them. And then when the youth go and start their own organizations, like look, well, they don't what come. They doing? What are they doing? They're yeah. doing mistakes. Yani, you didn't let us in at the beginning. That's how yeah. I see it. Do, do you see that issue? Is it becoming less? Do you feel because I feel it's it's becoming worse? As in, it, it, it's a shame we have so many. As in, how many centers do we have just Quite in London? We, we've got, oh, I say, oh, over five easies yeah. just within the Iraq community. You're talking just in the Iraq community. Yeah. So that these centers and these buildings are, are vacant for most of the year. Uh, we've got Shabab who are willing to take over. Um, are the Shabab willing to take over? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I said we we've been more than happy. I'll to give take you over. an example, uh, like so 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 because I spoke I spoke to Sheikh Hilly about this. Yeah. Um, have you have you tried? You, you know I don't I don't without you know mentioning names, but ha, have you tried like for example to do a certain program somewhere and you've been either declined or. Or, Honestly, or refuse nicely, you know, as they say, or, or no. they made it difficult for you to. to no, take in, ter- in terms of in terms of being refused, no. Honestly, we have we haven't. Alhamdulillah, we've had, we've got a good re- relationship with all most people. We, yeah. We've wanted to break those barriers. We don't want to be affiliated with anyone, and I think obviously that's come to our advantage. Mm-hmm. That anyone's happy to host us. Obviously, different centers come with different uh, 
setbacks or limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of politics involved, which is a shame. So each centre has its own politics, and oh, you can't speak to this guy, you can't get this guy. Is the politics and in the youth or youth organisations as well? Um, no, no, not that I'm aware. Because of, no. I, the way I see it, again, you might, you might, I, I see. That you know, there there was these political issues that were in the in the in the older generation. Yeah. This guy's from this, uh, and sometimes uh, like silly stuff like he follows this merger, so yeah, I, yeah. I follow this mosque is this merger. So so there was this tension that you're talking about that, but and Alhamdulillah, the youthful or, the youth organizations that have come about have tried to remove this, but somehow, and I could be wrong, and hopefully I am. I feel it's creeping in again. I don't think it's creeping I in. I feel there's still some some that hold that old mentality. Yeah, as in you'll always have the some that do, but I think I think it's more the not that it's for those reasons, but I might like to to go to a certain measures that does it in a different type of way than for example what Shabab Sabtain do. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of preference, more so than it's a matter of oh they they I can't disagree with whoever Marja one, two, three follow. I don't see it like that's not as bad as it used to be with our with our parents. We work quite a lot. Alhamdulillah, we've got like I said, strong ties with with, with everyone, and we want we want to continue to do so. With 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 regards to Shabab al uh, again, this is this is something that that some people I've heard and uh, yeah. they've asked is why is it every year you're at a different center for the love of god stick to one center and stay there I why th- I think why that's the why, key. why why are you jumping up the, the you know key, to different centers the key is why we do that is so one we're not affiliated to a certain center mm-hmm. okay two when you're kind of affiliate says center you mm-hmm. start to get those people who are oh, look they follow this person cuz they're just in that center so we're not going to go there so by moving around we don't really have that barrier we don't we're not affiliated to anyone um, three, I think I think it's good to move around, you work with different people, different times. Why not change it around? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a shame we don't have our own center. That's what I was about yeah, to ask. It, it would have, would have made our life a lot easier. Um, is the, is of course it costs so much money. I'm not going to say is there a plan? Yeah, because it's, it's you know it's something that's out of your hands. Yeah. It's not something that you know you can plan for with this stuff because the, there's the financial side of it, but. How how important is it for for a group like Shabab Sultan to have their own center, and why is that why is that not possible? Other than the finance, in in our case, it's not why. It's as in we, we've always spoken about it, but it's never been feasible because if let's say Brother Mustafa wants to fund us for a center, then obviously that will come with a certain agenda, agen- put agenda, my photo, or put my certain, photo on the top, or, or whatever it is, yeah put my name here, my name there. So that's that's what's always stopped us. So it's not so much the finance. You can raise the finance, but it's, it's the clauses that come with the finance. That's the problem. And I think it is important for you to have a base um, in the sense that you could do so much more, as in these centers will only allow you so much to use their facilities, etc. So, before, so. and they're not going to let you take over, then, which is a shame. Um, when you have your own center, obviously you have more control, could do a lot more. Um, Let's talk about Muharram. Um, this year, Sheikh Jihad uh, yeah. from Australia. Yeah. Um, firstly, I want to ask who who decides who comes to recite at your. So it's the committee. So we have a committee of how many people? So there, at the moment, we are five, and then we have another seven. So you vote. You, yeah. you you sort of a voting exactly. system. So we so we do like a short so, list of okay. who we want. Mm-hmm. Um, we put them in order and then we contact to see who's available, who's available exactly. and yeah. you've booked Alhamdulillah Sheikh, Sheikh, Jihad. Sheikh Jihad you had also Sheikh uh, Jihad uh, two years back two years ago, two years yeah. ago. Um, I'm guessing you, you you got good feedback the fact that you, we have Sheikh Jihad again this year yeah uh, Alhamdulillah he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a wonderful speaker yeah uh, he's, he's, he's wonderful to listen to on the member he's wonderful to be with to be around he always yeah. has a has a beautiful smile and um, and he enlights. I feel sometimes when he comes in, he lights the room up with yeah. his yeah. with his uh, character, and, uh, his speech. Um, what's the feedback uh, you Sheikh received? Jihad. That the fact that you've 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 had well, Sheikh Jihad was one of the strongest majalis we've had. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, um, I think he was so in touch with the youth. Mm-hmm. 
that that was the main point mm-hmm. where he was speaking about matters that actually affected them. Mattered. Yeah. Things that really And not mattered. things that was like 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very re- relevant. You've started something and you started this a few years ago. And yeah. I feel it's uh, it's now become something that you are known for. And that's the kids workshop. Yeah. Uh, what's the point of this kids show? First, what, what happens in this kids so workshop? So in the kids, it, it, it came about because we always think about when you have kids in the, in the majlis. Mm-hmm. One day, this, I don't want to say a disruption to the majlis, but they get bored. They get Let's bored be honest. Well, Adults yeah. get bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so let alone Depends kids. who's speaking. Yeah. Um, and their, and their attention span is only so long. Sahih. It's a 45 minute hour lecture. Yeah, sometimes so over pro- an hour, exactly. some speakers, alhamdulillah, so may Allah <laughs> bless them. So you wanna pro- we want to provide a facility where the parent can actually enjoy the lecture mm-hmm. without having to worry about their child and the child to benefit from the majlis. It's only so good the child sitting there just sitting on the phone the whole time. Mm-hmm. For them to actually go, sit and down, exactly. Listen to, listen to the teacher. It's a, it's a proper curriculum. It's a proper classroom. Yeah. And uh, how many is it? Do you have a limit to the kids that you take? So we for have example? to have a limit. Yeah, we have to have a limit. I mean, over the all years that we've had, we, we've more or less booked out every day. Mashallah. Yeah. So how many classes and what ages? So this year we're doing five to twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, we're splitting over, I believe, three to four classes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So three or four different teachers. Yeah. From the beginning of the majlis and usually the there's end. a helper as well. So it's teaching there's a helper as well. From the beginning of the majlis till the end, exactly. there, there's something for the kids relating exactly. to. Exactly. And the and the and the parent can't just come halfway through and take their child. No, no. If you bring pro- them beforehand to the classroom, they have to stay to the end. They stay till the end. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what I like about the idea is, not only are you giving uh, the 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 parents a break from their from their children during yeah. the majlis because I've seen it before. The father gives his mobile to his yeah, just to to keep, keep him, him quiet and keep him busy because you know you're in the middle of the majlis, but they're actually learning something, which yeah. is something I feel we haven't done. And they actually take things home, okay, yeah, and they, they can bring back the next day, not homework as such, but more kind of things, to an do activity maybe exactly. to do. <clears throat> all, all this stuff, you know, that that you guys do for Muharram, we're, we're talking generally Muharram or even even other other periods. So what you've got the the, the Muharram. 10 days and then I'm guessing the Ramadan seven or eight nights that yeah. you do usually every year and then there's every now and then you'll have you'll have you'll be part of a majlis whether it's a wuladit or a shahadat all this costs costs money so yeah. let's let's talk finance how, yeah. how how does that work I'm guessing uh and I want to be a bit frank here yeah uh yeah, I need everything out I'm guessing you guys don't pay for the center where you, no one charges you to uh, say Trying to look back, there's been a few centers, not the big ones. Okay, uh, they've they've charged okay. the big ones. The majority. No, so the bigger centers will not charge you to no. have a to have a to have a. No, but they did expect you to chip in. Maybe is it to food for to, for food or? So how, so how how does finance work with your so It's just run, as in within the community. There's there's no big financial backing. There's no merger backing. Is in it's just people like yourself, brother Ali Basri. Is that a hint for us? To inshallah, <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. Well, so, but someone might say, you know, you know, a majlis run on run on, you know, donations can only get so far. I yani you're not really gonna achieve. Maybe I yani why don't you get bigger? So why don't you get someone to come and support you? Whether it's a merge or a center or, or a big so businessman. Uh, uh, obviously, that has, that has a uh, and a point. It is a point. It says. It's, but like I said before, if you bring that person, it's going to come with their agenda and we don't want it. Have really you want had, it. again, this we is have, a yeah. I, 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 I haven't finished my have question. You had, uh, I haven't finished. Propose. Uh, have you had someone come and propose? Yeah. And actually, why did you say, why did you say for, no? For, the, for exactly that same reason. They, we, we, when we, they proposed, we sat down, we said, this is what how we want to run. There's no... As we're not the puppet, uh, we're just running your agenda. If you want us to run it, then we're going to run it. How we do things, they didn't agree, and that's it. What's the issues if you're if you're serving the Ahlul Bayt? Again, this might be getting into getting. I hope I'm not won't get anyone in trouble. But what's the problem if you're serving? I mean, if it's the a Ahlul shared Bayt, agenda, there is no problem. No, no, I'm saying, not not with you. I'm yeah. saying, what is their issue if you're ser- if the, if their purpose is that you're serving the Ahlul Bayt and serving the community? Yeah. Then, and you've been doing it for years. You've got experience. Yeah. Why do you believe there's no trust? Why? Why do they have to put, you know, terms and conditions for the way? I'm not too sure. You need to ask them that. Yeah. I need to invite. But that's the problem. As in, 
with with throughout all these years is i'm sure you you know you, and you, you've realized this well it comes down to the intention when the intention is solid and it's pure and, and it's for the right purpose allah wafaq and things run smoothly and yeah and if things happen that you won't believe you might not have a single penny for the majlis and it will just all of a sudden it will come, come from, from nowhere you don't know how it comes you don't know how it happens but it happens based when the intention is not there or there's side intentions or or not pure intentions and we don't really want to be involved in that alhamdulillah i i believe shabab al subtain is is an organization that has done a lot for the for the for the for the youth what's um i mean something that might be worrying yeah uh, and i might i may be wrong because i'm not inside the the, the committee or i don't know the ins and outs of shabab al subtain and that is if if the older generation of Shabab al Subtain, yourself, Sayyid Muhammad, uh, whoever else—that's what that's left <laughs> of, the <laughs> of the of the of, of the, the original. Okay, of the original. Okay, so I got them two right. I got you two right. Um, but if if that if that group is now, you're saying, you know, you know, you, in our busy lives, you know, you you work from nine to whatever time, and yeah. you've got a family, kids, or you've got to make time for your family, you got to make time. And you got to make time for yourself as well. 100%. And then all of a sudden you have to, you know, organize all these majalis. How, what, what do you think the future? And again, I'm saying I'm worried, but maybe because you're in Shabab Sultan, you'll see it differently. If you and Muhammad, because now you're saying out of the original, only two have stayed part as part yeah. of. So what happens if, if you guys leave and then and if, so we're saying maybe in five, ten years, yeah. that's going to be worrying because as a father who's got a child, in 10 years, I need you guys to be still be alive and organizing majalis. Otherwise, yeah. I'm in trouble, for example, I'm, I'm saying. Do you think, do you think, what is the future for uh, SAS, as you're not, Shabab as subtain As in? Could you end? If, if all of a sudden the main... Okay, anything can end, I'm sure. Uh, but I think that's why we've included the younger boys now. Mm -hmm. As you know, when they're younger, the, the average age is 18. Okay. 17, 18. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they've got plenty of years ahead of them. So inshallah, they, they can carry it. But we'll always be there to advise. So I'll always be involved involved as part of SES. Yes. So, so that's giving me some good news that <laughs> you're all, you'll, <laughs> you'll, all, you'll always be there. What's, what's, uh, is there anything planned other than at the moment, the Muharram Ramadan? I've noticed every uh, on social media every yeah. now and then. You guys are starting, um, for example, you do an activity, whether it's football or I don't know, any other activity. Are there more activities planned we're, for we're hoping throughout to do the that. year? We're, sure. Yeah, we're hoping to do that kind of regular activities. I, I, as in growing, when I, when I was growing up, the, these trips and these activities, it, it, it really hit home because that's when you kind of really mingle with your friends. And at the same time, you've got the... The, the the spiritual aspect of it as well involved so it's not just lecture 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 there's actually fun you can have fun okay and still benefit and still learn so we're going to try and do a lot more activities inshallah in the coming years uh you've also started what i've noticed are these short courses yeah uh with different uh academics or sometimes yeah. different people uh What's the point of these? Are, are we going to see more of these again, type of events? Again, as in this was the first one we've done with with Professor Ahab Bidawi. Um, alhamdulillah, very good success, very good feedback. <clears throat> Attendance wise? Very good. Um, very different crowd to, to what you expect. Okay. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of them are, I've, I've never met, I've never seen. So mm. it just shows you that there, there is a demand for these things. Um, and inshallah, yeah, we can do more of them as well. Ahsan Haji Muhammad for coming on today's Anytime. Progeny podcast. Thank we you. here wish you, inshallah, all the best uh, in serving the, the community through the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. Inshallah. And inshallah, you're always successful to continue what you do best. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Haji.